What would you do if you were infected with a virus that is deadly and for which apparently doesn't even a cure exist yet? Would you stay in isolation and accept your fate? Or would you go and seek help and hope that there will be an antivirus, but that way risking the life of everyone around? <coughs> this is the dilemma that the protagonists in the movie Emergency Declaration have to face. And if you want to know how they decide and if that is a voluntary decision, then stay with me for this short review video. Apparently a completely normal morning in South Korea. Except for one guy waking up, deciding that today is the day he will bring his whole country to his knees and maybe even the whole world, because he has access to a modified virus, which is deadly and for which there is no tested cure yet. To spread the virus as wide as possible, he is going on a plane, choosing the one with the most people on board. Having infected himself, everything seems to go according to plan, but he was too careless in sending out his terrorist message via social media. And that way he is identified, so now everyone knows that there is a deadly virus on the plane with a country of destination prohibiting them to land and with other countries also not willing to let them come down on one of their airports, slowly the fuel is growing low and the options of the passengers and the crew are diminishing. What will their country do and what are they willing to risk? If you want to find out then maybe stay for the spoiler zone, but otherwise I'm stopping the synopsis here. An emergency declaration is a situation in which a plane is either having so little fuel that they cannot make it to another airport or that there is another defect that requires them to immediately land. If an emergency declaration is issued, no airport in the world is allowed to deny that. But as I described in the synopsis, this is a situation where at least some countries and some airports are not willing to comply. The movie gets a lot of its tension out of the fact that, of course, on board everyone is discussing what to do and if they are willing to just sacrifice themselves or if they want to land and just take the risk because there might be a cure based on the original virus, which was just modified to be even more lethal. Maybe that cure could work. While on board the tension is rising, there's of course a lot of stuff going on between the relatives of the passengers who are not sure what will happen and are left mainly in the dark, as well as some authorities trying to figure out how to best deal with that, including some weird ways in rushing a test of a cure to see if it might work. Unfortunately, there are a few things that are just not really believable, and I will touch on those in the spoiler zone. But let me just say here that the movie is really putting your willingness to suspend your disbelief to the test. This is pretty much everything I can say in a spoiler-free way, so let's just jump into the rating. Technical and production values on this movie are of course high, and you would not expect anything less from a movie that was produced to be a blockbuster in South Korea, which it was. The acting is also strong, and the suspension of disbelief is more around the things that are being done and not the way they are acted, so also nothing to complain here. But overall I would also say that with 147 minutes, the movie is a little bit too long. Especially if you consider the outcome and what I mean by that I will touch on in the spoiler zone. I still was entertained so that is a plus, but I also kept looking at my watch, which is a bad sign and can be attributed, like I said before, to the long runtime. All that considered, I am rating this one with 6 out of 10 points, putting it above average, mainly for its entertainment value but not giving it a higher score due to the fact that I just didn't buy into it. And now let's look at the reasons for that. But before we go there, if you don't want to get spoiled but enjoyed this video so far, please like it now before you leave. And if you are no subscriber yet, then maybe consider to change that. By also hitting the notification bell, you will get a heads up for most of my new videos. And now, if you don't mind spoilers or have already watched the movie, please follow me into the spoiler zone. Okay, let's just get straight to it. My main point of critique here is that there was a little bit of commotion going on on the plane, but at the end of the day, pretty much soon, everyone was just happy to say, let's sacrifice our lives so that we can protect the world and our families. And the same is true for their relatives, who were also just pretty much accepting that, without much arguing. 
And that struggle was handled so quickly that you were wondering why this movie is 147 minutes long, like I previously said. And frankly, I just didn't buy into that. If it would have been Americans or Germans on board, I can guarantee you the outcome would have been different. But on the other hand, one of my fellow festival visitors, where this movie was shown as the closing night, was suggesting that he is buying it completely because the Korean are just such a considerate people that they would actually do that. And I have to say, I am not quite sure if it is politically incorrect to believe that or to doubt that. Both seems to be a little bit incorrect. And I cannot imagine that you can really get a complete consensus even between people from a country that are known to be more considerate. So still, I didn't buy that. And by the way, the only person who was not giving in was the father of one of the passengers, who happens to be a police officer, who largely contributed to the movie's conclusion by just injecting himself with a virus, just so that they can test if the antivirus would work. But that was completely weird, because he was giving himself the injection after everyone else was infected. And then to counteract that, he was just giving himself a higher dosage. And still everything worked out fine, so that they could actually conclude something from that. That was the other thing that I just didn't buy into. I would buy into that he would try to do it, but the outcome, again, seems to be a little bit far-fetched. What I do believe though, and that is the sad part and the good thing of the movie, is that most countries would have just not allowed them to land, including their own, which only allowed them, and this is the big spoiler here, but we are in the spoiler zone, allowed them to land after it was clear that the antivirus is working. Otherwise, they would have just accepted that everyone would die in the plane or when the plane crashes due to lack of fuel. So that's it. What do you think? Is that really believable? Do you think that a complete group of passengers of a plane could decide unanimously to sacrifice themselves? Or are you also not buying into that? Or have you seen the movie and disagree with my assessment? Or do you agree with it? Whatever it is, whatever you want to share about this movie, just let me know in the comments. So much for now, see you next time and thanks for watching.